Greetings. Welcome to the St. Thomas Video Podcast. We're doing it weekly and we hope you enjoy it. And we have a new one for you today. So I invite you to give your attention to Rich Carroll, one of our newer members at St. Thomas. And you will be blessed by his words and his heart. To understand where I am with God today, we gotta go back in time, way back. As a young man, I fancied myself quite intelligent. I was so intelligent, I decided to go into military intelligence. And all you ex-military spare me the jokes about military intelligence being a contradiction in terms. Anyhow, while in the military, I contracted an illness that attacked my brain. It was called encephalitis, which is a fancy word for a brain infection. There are different types of encephalitis with varying rates of mortality and severe after effects. The type of encephalitis I had had a mortality rate of 70% untreated and 90% of untreated survivors don't return to the previous level of functioning. However, a new miracle drug had just come out before I became ill that reduced the mortality rate to only 15 to 20% and a much improved level of functioning among survivors. This drug became available to doctors just a few years before my illness. I became severely incapacitated, but only for a short time compared to those who came down with the disease before this miracle drug. I had some close encounters with God during this time, as we often do during times of crisis. After I recuperated, I went on with life. Based on my pre-encephalitic GRE scores and academic performance, I went to graduate school. But something wasn't right. Things like writing papers and making oral presentations that came easily to me as an undergraduate were quite difficult in grad school. Not understanding what was happening, I dropped out and went to work in various types of mills, plastic factories, paper converter plants, foundries, etc. My symptoms post-encephalitis were neuropsychiatric in nature. At these places, I had nicknames like Forrest Gump, Rain Man, Alpizheimer, etc., reflecting my lack of mental ability on the job. But in those days, people always made fun of each other. That wasn't a big deal. If people didn't make fun of you, it meant they didn't like you. And in that sense, I guess I was well liked. What was a big deal was that they were making fun of the one thing I didn't want to be made fun of, my mental acuity or lack thereof. So, of course, I didn't tell them about my neurologic problems as that would be considered wall wallowing in self-pity. But I was experiencing blackouts that were not obvious to other people and various psychiatric problems that I won't go into. I was too proud to go back to the VA and ask for help. For years, I tried to tough out symptoms. However, I eventually swallowed my pride and went back to the VA. They came up with a second miracle drug that largely eliminated the neuropsychiatric problems that I was experiencing in the aftermath of the illness. It's one thing to suffer. It's another thing to suffer for years because you're too proud to ask for help. So that begs the question, where does God fit in all this today? Well, I'm thankful to God on a variety of levels. I feel that God works miracles through the works of people and the people in my life are no exception. I am thankful to God for the researchers that came up with the miracle drug that was discovered just before my illness and allowed me to survive and not end up severely impaired. I am thankful to God for the doctors that had the knowledge of this drug and applied it without knowing what the outcome would be. I remember through the haze of the illness how astonished the doctors were at how well I recuperated from what had been a deadly, such a deadly disease just a few years before. I am thankful to God for the small amount of empathy I was given for those who are permanently mentally impaired. I can't look at people with intellectual disabilities in the same way since my illness. 
I am thankful to God for the empathy I was given for those who are considered mentally ill as my post-encephalitic symptoms closely resemble various types of mental illness. I am thankful to God for the doctors that treated me for the neuropsychiatric symptoms experienced after the illness. I am thankful to God for the kindness many people showed me while I was recuperating from the illness. I am even thankful to God for the people that weren't so kind. They helped me to thicken my emotional skin and not take myself so seriously and to be able to laugh at myself. Finally, I am thankful for the St. Thomas Church, which late in life has provided me with a venue to worship a most merciful God. And for that, I thank you.